Companies and individuals these days buy virtually all of their electronic components through distributors rather than going to the manufacturers directly, even for large quantities uh, of components. We wanted to look at the role played by electronic component distributors within the industry and find out more about the role they play in the supply chain and why this has come about. To do this, we talked to a number of people from some of the major distributors to find out more. First of all, we asked exactly what do distributors do. It may sound obvious, but it's really important to understand this before moving on. Distributors are the, are the group of people out there who supply most of the electronic components of the world because uh, uh, if you think about it, manufacturers deal direct with uh, very few large customers and the rest of the customers are handled by, by distribution. There are different types of distributors, but uh, certainly that's where most of the components now get shipped around the world when we're talking about uh, uh, volume of customers. There are many things electronic component distributors do as an important part of the supply chain. At a very high level, the two primary things are engineering, design support, and supply assurance. Electronic component distributors enable innovation by building bridges between companies that make excellent technology available to engineers who know how to use it in fantastic ways. Distributors aggregate supply and demand and stock inventory for customers so they have access to it when they need it. The next question is whether you can buy large or small quantities from the distributors and whether there are special types of distributors for, for different things and quantities. There are many types of distributors. There are ones focused on large volumes for production, others that are focused on providing flexibility for smaller volumes to support engineering design as well as production shortages, and some who can do both quite well. There are also distributors that focus on specialized technologies such as RF wireless or industrial automation or specific value-added services such as cable assembly or programming devices, and others that focus on end-of-life and excess inventory, just to name a few types of distributors. There's different types of distributor for sure, Ian. I mean, uh, some distributors are really good at uh, supply chain. Some distributors are really good at uh, MPI. And some distributors are just very specialist with specialist parts or working with a very few specialist manufacturers. So th they're probably the three main areas that you look at when you're talking about distributors. And they're all very different. And uh, what we find is that uh, many customers now know those differences and use the strengths of uh, each of those for whatever they need. In view of this, do companies use just one distributor or might they go to several distributors to meet their needs? Most people would use multiple distributors. It's, it's really hard to, to say someone could use one distributor for everything. It, uh, in the perfect world, that would probably be the case. Uh, if we look at the market this year when uh, there's shortages, it would almost be impossible to do that. In more normal times, people could probably use less distributors uh, and many people have programs to use less distributors because therefore they're more important to those ones that they do have. But it's, it's really tough just to use one. I believe companies may tend to use multiple distributors, but over time, narrow the distributor base. It starts with companies identifying what service and support they need and then working more and more closely with the distributors that earn their trust by consistently providing the services and solutions that the customer needs. It is just natural to lean more on the distributor that you trust the most. As manufacturers want to schedule the deliveries, how can distributors help with this? Uh, pretty easy on the on the uh, distribution side is one of the things that uh, distributors do really well is that uh, scheduling is something which is just a normal part of the business. So if someone wants to schedule it out over a, a few months or six months or a year, that's something that's pretty easily done by a distributor to make it easy that people can just place the orders and get them when they need them. One of the primary roles of a distributor is to have the product available when the customer needs it. One way to do this is certainly by accepting scheduled orders, which most distributors do. There are also supply chain programs in which distributors and manufacturers partner to ensure inventory is reserved and then released as the manufacturer needs it. This type of program can be beneficial if rescheduling is necessary, and this will save on the administrative effort. 
One of the major issues all manufacturers encounter is that of supply shortages. There seem to be regular semiconductor shortages, for example, when lead times go out to many weeks. Can distributors do anything to help resolve this situation? The electronics components industry tends to be very cyclical, and at times during the cycle, demand will be greater than supply. During this time, the value of distributors is magnified and at times challenged if the supply and demand is greatly out of balance. Since distributors aggregate demand for component suppliers, they are able to pipeline products on the component suppliers to maintain a steady supply of incoming stock. In most cases, they can spread the investment in inventory over many customers, but this can be an area where distributors differ. Some distributors are more willing than others to build up inventory so customers can buy it as they need it. Yeah, it's all about inventory. Um, you know, the, the prime role that we play is putting the right inventory on the shelf uh, and putting the right inventory on the shelf for a lot of suppliers. So, uh, you know, many distributors have a lot of different suppliers and a lot of inventory, and that could be local inventory, it could be global inventory, and that sort of sits between the manufacturer and uh, the, the uh, supplier and the customer. So really, at the end of the day, it's a huge, huge role in the market that the distribution plays in ensuring there is some product out there in the market. That brings me on to support. Who should designers go to these days for support? Design information, things like that. Is it the distributor or should they go to the manufacturer directly? First, I think we should highlight how designers get support. When I first joined this industry, it was very customary for suppliers and distributors to have field engineers that were generally accessible for face-to-face -face discussions. Today, most of that information is consumed online. Engineers will often utilize the distributor's site to leverage the broader range of product information across multiple suppliers that a distributor curates and then do a deeper technical dive with the particular manufacturer. On a distributor site, design engineers will be able to compare products across multiple component suppliers also, the engineer will be able to truly see what the availability of the product is. No stock at the distributor may be a red flag that the product is not ready yet for purchase and could be risky to the design in. Also, engineers are increasingly self-sufficient in using online resources. Going to one online distributor with detailed support, forums, blogs, design tools, reference designs, product training modules, and video libraries will cover many electronic component suppliers rather than going to each one individually. Yeah, the in, in increasing way that designers are, are getting information about products and new products is actually on the web. Uh, so uh, historically, you know, there were lots of people driving around in cars with books going to see engineers. Uh, but now most of the activity seems to, to start on the website. And then it's a case of what happens from there. Do they have enough information to, to go ahead and, and buy the parts and start doing the work? Or do they need to get somebody else involved? which could be an FAE at a distributor or could be direct with a manufacturer. So does using a distributor make it easier to obtain the latest components? Yeah, a, a lot of distributors uh, stock the latest components, although um, back to one of the earlier answers about uh, you know, who fits, MPI or a supply chain or a specialist distributor, but certainly an MPI distributor would typically receive a lot of the components before some of those supply chain distributors, uh, which means they're a great place to go. Um, and the information comes out very quickly now from a, a manufacturer to a, these MPI distributors to make sure the information gets out there first. And then really Google takes over in a big way that uh, you know, the information is on there and people Google it and they're gonna find the inventory at that distributor who stocks it. In most cases, yes, since component suppliers rely on the distributor to have new product information and inventory available to support new designs. Using certain distributors makes it easier to obtain the newest components. This can be an area of difference between distributors. Some invest in NPI and the newest components from multiple suppliers more than others. Engineers want to have the latest products and the data associated with those products as soon as they are available and migrate to those distributors that invest in and manage NPI well. Manufacturers often talk about product prior to its actual availability. This worked well in the past to enable customers to intersect availability with the product design cycle, but it can cause frustration today. Information from a distributor site tends to focus on what's available today. 
What happens if a company has bought excess inventory, for example? Are they left with this? Or is the distributor able to help out in some situations? Stock buyback has changed over the last decade with increased concerns to not introduce counterfeit product into the supply chain. Policies are different for different distributors and a couple of key factors are returning it to the manufacturer or distributor that it was purchased from and whether the packaging has been opened. It is something that would need to be controlled and I would say it comes down to the distributor, the customer and the relationship between them. It certainly depends on the situation. Uh, a lot depends really in terms of uh, where they bought it from and uh, the condition of the components that they have. So if they're buying from a, a franchise distributor, uh, a franchise distributor would accept it back if it's in its original box and hasn't been touched. Uh, and that may be possible to be resold. Uh, if it's uh, been opened in any way or tampered with in any way, a franchise distributor wouldn't take it back. There can be issues with buying counterfeit components. If you go onto the open market, for example, it's very easy to buy components that you, you may not be uh, totally certain where they come from. And certainly some manufacturers, if they put this into um, equipment for government contracts, could be blacklisted. How can distributors help with this situation? How can they ensure that the components they supply are not counterfeit, counterfeit in any way? Uh, kind of easy, depends where, where, where the customer goes. I mean, uh, franchise distribution is the place to go if you don't want counterfeit parts. I mean, uh, we have to meet a lot of stringent uh, guidelines to, to ensure that everything goes out in the correct way from the manufacturer. So uh, if a customer is looking to ensure they're not getting counterfeit parts, then just make sure you go into a franchise distributor in whatever region you're in. This is the reason component suppliers have authorized franchise distributors. Any product purchased from the authorized distributor should be traceable back to the factory. If a customer buys product on the open market, all bets are off. It increases the risk that it may be counterfeit. High service distributors in particular are highly vigilant for detecting counterfeit product and do everything they can to proactively prevent them from entering the marketplace because their reputation depends on it. Earning customer trust by only offering the highest quality products is the number one key to success. It starts at the top by vetting the suppliers a distributor works with, ensuring that they are reputable and trustworthy. Many distributors require that suppliers undergo a thorough onboarding process. There are many other steps a distributor should take to ensure they're providing authentic products. For example, some distributors have CAP and other certifications from third-party organizations. They use detailed product barcodes that provide date and lot codes. They can provide certificates of conformity and have internal teams of industry experts researching each product listed for sale. These answers give a very good idea of what distributors actually do and how they fit in with the overall supply chain and manufacturing process and how companies find them an invaluable uh, resource and support for their activities. If you need any more information, head over to the description area for the video where there is more information and some links. And also, please don't forget to like the video and also uh, subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.